First of all, let me just say, don't start listening to podcasts. It is a deep, dark hole that you'll never come back from. Now, obviously, the podcast thing was a joke. I've been listening to podcasts recently, and I keep getting more and more ideas for videos that I, like, just have to make, and it keeps challenging me to do things that I'm not comfortable doing. And for this video, I decided to do something that is probably the hardest thing I've done to make a b-roll segment in my life. And you already know what it is because you saw the title for this video when you clicked on it, and that is shooting b-roll with nothing but a tripod. Now I don't mean using a tripod like a poor man's steady cam, or using a tripod as a poor man's dolly, or all the hacks that you can do using a tripod. I'm talking about actually using a tripod, how it was made to be used, doing nothing except pans, tilts, combinations of the two, and static shots. And just making that little b-roll segment has taught me so much that I wasn't paying attention to when filming my b-roll segments handheld or with a gimbal. Now, first of all, I have up to this point pretty much done movement shots in all of my videos, talking about camera transitions and how to shoot handheld and, and how to get smooth movement, how to film next level B-roll. But something that I learned when I tried to use a tripod, just a lockdown shot on a tripod for doing B-roll, is how little I know, how little I understand about framing. Because if you take some of my b-roll segments, where I thought it was like a really cool b-roll segment, and then you just take a frame from one of those clips, it doesn't look very good. But when I had the tripod, I paid so much attention to framing, to focal length, to compression, to depth of field, and I realized how much more there is than just getting smooth movement and slow motion in your videos. And today I wanna share with you the things that I learned in one afternoon of going out and trying to film an entire B-roll segment on a lockdown tripod. And the first thing I learned is that my tripod, even though it's decent, is not a very good tripod for video. Yes, it has fluid pan and fluid tilt, but the resistance on it isn't very good. It's not very consistent. And so trying to do pans and tilts at the same time, sort of an angle shot, just do not look good when you're using a cheap tripod. And that's actually one of the things that the podcast I was listening to mentioned. Caleb Pike was being interviewed by the guys at Indie Mogul, and he was talking about how he, until the last year, never really owned a high quality tripod and never knew what he was missing, not being able to do those pans and tilts at the same time to get really unique camera movement that people just aren't getting anymore. And that's something I found out is that having a cheap fluid head doesn't give you any favors. It's very hard to get smooth, consistent, concise movement with a junky fluid head. Another thing that filming on a tripod does is it makes you think about the edit a lot more. You can't just go out and film random b-roll, slap it together, and have it look good. You need to be shooting transition shots like I did with the pan from the one direction facing left to the right so that I could put that between the two shots, the one facing left 
and the one facing right. If I would have just switched from left to right, that would have been a really jarring edit and would not have looked as good as having a sort of a pan. It also makes you think about focal length because having a wide angle lens on a gimbal or shooting handheld, well, you can just make all sorts of stuff look good. But when you're doing lockdown shots, you start thinking about it more in a photographer's light of having excellent framing. And what I saw really clearly is that I could totally change the look of something just by zooming or unzooming the lens or rather switching between focal lengths, not all having that wide angle look, not all having the compressed look, but trying to capture the looks that I want by picking the focal length and then getting my framing after that and if something doesn't look good at wide, go tight. If something doesn't look good tight, go wide. Another thing that you'll learn when you try to shoot a great epic B-roll segment using just a tripod is how to actually use shallow depth of field to your advantage. And setting your camera on a tripod and actually focusing on different things and using that shallow depth of field to do focus shifts and realizing that sometimes you want to have more in focus than a little sliver of your frame can actually help bring your message along. And another thing that I started to learn was how to use pans and tilts and actually make them look good. And I will see other people doing pans or tilts in their videos and be like, eh, that would probably be easy. But it's not. And I think the reason why professional tilts and pans look really good, but a lot of amateurs like mine don't really, is because we, with these gimbals and steady cam, have never had to learn how to frame something very well. And that's the number one thing that I've learned in using this limitation of a tripod for all of my b-roll and having proper composition in your films makes a huge difference. I know that I have gotten lazy and just sort of swiped my camera all over the place, done a spin in, spin out, not paying attention to either my subject or my composition of my b-roll segments. And it's because of things like that that when I compare my b-roll segments to someone like Peter McKinnon or Maddie, that I can tell that their B-roll segment looks way better than mine, not because they have a better camera, but because they're paying attention to how they frame. They're paying attention how they tell a story. And I see and I understand that now. And from now on, my intention is going to be to film every B-roll segment with excellent framing, make every clip in a B-roll segment so good that I could take a snapshot from anywhere on the segment, post it to Instagram, and have people think that I just took a photo. Well, I think that's kind of it for this video. It's not like expert advice. I just wanted to share with you something that I learned yesterday. And it's something I think you can apply to your filmmaking to make your videos better. So if you haven't done it before, grab your tripod, go out into your town or the woods or wherever, your house, and try and film an epic b-roll segment with just your tripod. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.